Good evening. Welcome to Wednesday Night Vespers service. Uh, my devotional tonight, if I had to title it something, I guess I would call it Words. Because um, it's about the words we use in our everyday life. As Christians, we have a hope that no one else has. And um, we have a lot to be positive about and hopeful about. So our words should demonstrate that to the world. Um, sometimes the words that we say uh, may brighten someone's day or sometimes they can even change their life. Um, I want to tell you a story that as a child I used to read at my grandmother's house. She had this book called Uncle Arthur's Bedtime Stories, and it was a story about a, a poor young man uh, who mostly lived on the street, uh, and one day he was on the sidewalk in front of a department store, and this well-dressed lady came up uh, she looked to be rich to him, and he went up and he opened the door for her. And he held it open while she went all the way through, and she said, Thank you, what a nice young man you are. And she went on through, and he probably never saw her again. But he said those words changed his life. He was so uh, proud that she said those to him. But then he got to thinking, well, why shouldn't she thank me? Uh, just because I'm poor doesn't mean that I can't be a good person. And he grew up to be a success, very successful businessman. So words might not only brighten somebody's day, they may change change someone's life. Words often stay with people for a very long time, whether they're good or they're hurtful. And um, sometimes those words stay for the rest of their life, like that young man's, young man's did. And I also want to tell you another story that, um, I think I've told this story before in church. I don't know if it was during a devotional or Sunday school. Uh, I read it first a, a long time ago in Reader's Digest, maybe 15 or 20 years ago. And you may have read it too, because I think it's been repeated. But anyway, getting to the story, there was a teacher whose uh, class had been sort of unruly for the week, and um, toward the end of the week, she thought to settle them down, uh, she would do this little exercise. So she had everybody get out uh, a pencil and piece of paper, and she told them to look around the room at every person in there and to write down the best thing that they could say about that person. And at the end of the class, uh, she took all the papers up, and that weekend she went home and she compiled a list for each student uh, of all the nice things that their classmates had said about them. And the next week she gave each student um, uh, all the nice things that had been uh, said about them in that list. Well, fast forward to many years down the road, uh, a lot of those students were gathered again for the funeral of, of one of their classmates who had been killed in Vietnam. His name was Mark. And uh, they went to the funeral, and then the next day, all those students gathered with the teacher, who must have been a really good teacher to be that it's still involved with them. They gathered with the teacher and with Mark's parents uh, for lunch. And while they were there, Mark's dad reached in his pocket, and he took out a piece of paper, and it was Mark's list. He said that um, when they found Mark's body, that the list was on it. Sorry. But anyway, so it meant so much to him that he carried it to Vietnam with him. And it was, he had the list on him when he got killed. And uh, the other students started speaking up. One girl said, I keep mine in my Bible. Another said, I keep mine in my purse. And somebody else kept theirs in their wallet. Uh, numerous students, they still all had their list of the good things that people had said about them. And I think that just shows how much people need to hear good, affirming life words. Um, Isaiah 50 uh, chapter 50, verse 4 says, The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. You know, encouraging seems to come very naturally to some people. It's just like it's just effortless, and um, it's just very natural for them. Uh, but being an encourager is something that all Christians can cultivate. And I think once you become an encourager, uh, that it's such a pleasure to be an encourager that, that you would want to do it more. So um, we should all, as Christians, try to be encouragers of others because a lot of people live in very discouraging circumstances today. And it's amazing how words can change a person's perspective. You may not be able to do anything about the situation that they're in, but if you can change their perspective and give them hope with your words, then that can make a major difference in their life. Proverbs 12, 5 says, Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. And Proverbs 16, 24 says, An anxious heart weighs a man down, 
but a kind word cheers him up. So whenever we're tempted to criticize someone in an unloving manner, now you, you may be some kind of supervisor or a teacher or a parent or whatever, sometimes you do have to criticize, but if we can choose our words to be in a loving manner, in a, a we should determine to use words that encourage the world, not, not to tear it down, words that lift people up. And using words to encourage others is a very important role for a Christian, but we can also use words in other ways uh, to help bring about good. Using uh, words of tact and dis diplomacy in our, in our workplace, in our school, with our friends and family, um, many times can help uh, prevent volatile situations from coming up. I don't know if you've ever been involved in a conversation where it seemed to be getting out of hand and a little bit of tact and diplomacy just settle things out. As Christians, we should be determined that we will use words of tact and diplomacy uh, because many times there's a saying about a word being aptly placed um, can avert a disaster, and that is so true. So as Christians, we should uh, try to use our words uh, in ways that help make life better for people, to be peacemakers. Uh, Matthew 5, 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We should we use our words to be peacemakers. And another uh, part of peacemaking is using it personally for ourselves. I know probably every person in the world has at some time felt like they were unjustly attacked uh, or someone jumps on them for no reason. If you can respond in a kind, non-retaliatory word, use those words, uh, many times the person is kind of taken aback and doesn't, doesn't really know how to respond to you. If they jump on you and you don't retaliate, um, you can diffuse that situation too. So we need to use it for our own, uh, our own personal lives. And when you respond that way, many times it might give you an opportunity for witness. Proverbs 15.1 says, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So who knows? Um, when we use our words in a uh, kind, in, with a kind response, many times it might give us um, a time to witness. Another uh, part of using words uh, that are Christ-like is to let our language be pure. Uh, so what about the use of profanity and foul language? That's a lot more common today than it was even 20 years ago. It seems like the use of profanity is just accepted in our society. People use it in the workplace, on television. It just seems to be everywhere. Uh, but we read in the Bible, it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. So, so what does that mean? You know, I've heard people say, Well, it's just my way of letting off steam. Well, I don't know exactly what that means, but I, I know what it means for me. And profanity usually comes from anger or frustration. And it's, especially if you direct it at someone else, it's always negative or hurtful. So what kind of words should come out of our mouth? Um, the old saying that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me is absolutely not true. Words are very powerful and we should choose them very carefully. Um, many times the words our words are an indication of where our heart is. So we need to be very careful to guard our hearts and our minds and to uh, stay in tune to, to Christ and the way that he would have us behave. Um, and if we keep a close check on our hearts and minds, usually that will affect our words too. Matthew 12, 36 tells us that on the day of judgment, we will have to give an account for every careless word that we've spoken. So maybe our prayer tonight should be, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Thank you. Y'all have a good evening.